Okay. What's up, everybody? We are doing the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth um, Modern Horizons set review. The full set review, all 300 ish cards. Uh, we've done white, we've done blue, we've done black, we've done red, and now we're on to the final monocolored set, and that is green. Let's get going. If you're watching this on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, we're trying to get our subscription numbers up so that we have access to some of the more intricate tools on the back end. We'd appreciate a sub uh, if you're hanging around and enjoying the content. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Appreciate all the conversations in the comments and on Discord and whatnot. So I love you. Thank you so much. Feel free to reach out to me anytime on social. Uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. The first green card we have from Tales of Middle Earth is Bag and Porter. And apologies, uh, my throat is really rough. I'm talking a lot um, and I haven't talked this animatedly or this much in a really long time so my throat is really feeling it and i'm butchering a lot of tolkien names so please accept my apology for that uh we'll go over some of the set mechanics as we run into them in each color so that if you're just watching this one video uh, you don't miss out on any of the set mechanic details uh so bag and porter is three and a green for a four four dwarf creature Whenever Bag and Porter attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. So this guy is a friend of the legendary creatures. Pretty fun. Um, yeah. I think all of the hobbits so far have been halflings. So the fact that Bag and Porter has Bag and in their name, but they're also a dwarf uh, is interesting. So that's cool. Uh, next up, we have Bombadil's Song. One in a green for an instant. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains hexproof until end of turn. The ring tempts you. So we'll jump over here to the ring uh, rules. So when it when a card says the ring tempts you, uh, you get an emblem named the ring. If you don't already have one, then your emblem gains the next ability and you choose a creature you control to remain or become your ring bearer. So at all times, you're going to have, um, not at all times, but every time the ring tempts you, you have to choose a creature you control uh, to become your ring bearer. There's things on some of the cards that change depending on whether or not said creature is a ring bearer or not. Um, the ring can't contempt you even if you don't control a creature. The ring gains its abilities in order from top to bottom, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, once it gains an ability, it has that ability for the rest of the game. So it has everything above its current level. Uh, each time the ring tempts you, you must choose a creature if you control one. So you can't decide not to have a ring bearer if you have creatures. Uh, each player can only have one emblem named the ring and only one ring bearer at a time. The ring looks like this. So the ring is a uh, token and it levels up depending on how many times the ring has tempted you. For some reason, it's all positive, all upside. Um, and that's, I guess, gonna be fun and okay, but think of this kind of like dungeon delving in the Dungeons and Dragons set or some sort of weird level up artifacts that you can attach to things. Um, but yeah, when a card says, the ring tempts you that's what you do you level up your ring um this is a pretty good instant spell it gains hex proof gets a one one counter um the the one one actually it doesn't get a one one counter it just gets one one plus one plus one until end of turn uh, which isn't solid but it's okay next up is celeborn the wise three and a green for a three three elf noble legendary creature Whenever you attack with one or more elves, scry one. Whenever you scry, Celeborn the Wise gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each card looked at while scrying this way. So it doesn't depend on its own scrying. You can scry with other, in other ways and trigger Celeborn's ability there. That's pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Delighted Halfling. 
One green mana for a 1-2 halfling citizen creature. Tap it to add color, one colorless mana, or tap it to add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a legendary spell, and that spell can't be countered. Very strong. Very, very strong. Um, very neat. I think that's going to be really, really good. This You can't counter legendary spells? That's just ridiculous. Um, next up, we have Dwayne... Dwayne... Doing Dane Rangers. Three and a green for a 4-4 four, four human ranger creature with landfall. Whoa. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you don't control a ring bearer, the ring tempts you. Interesting. I didn't think we were going to see landfall in this set. That's pretty neat. Um, if you don't control a ring bearer, so that's... Kind of like if your ring bearer has already died and then you get a landfall trigger. That's, that's interesting. Uh, Elven Chorus is up next. Three and a green for an enchantment. Uh, look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creatures and s creature spells from the top of your library. And creatures you control have tapped to add one mana of any color. That is super powerful. Um, huge boon to play on turn four or turn two or turn three depending on how quickly you're gaining uh, mana there um, but that's a really really good i like that a lot next up we have enraged enraged horn who are who are four and a green for a four five tree folk creature with trample when enraged huron who who orn who orn Enraged Huorn enters the battlefield. The ring tempts you. That's it. Okay. I struggled so much with the name just for it to be like nothing. Entish Restoration. Look at that cool guy. Uh, two and a green for an instant. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. If you control a creature with power four or greater, instead search your library for up to three basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Uh, unfortunately, it says basic land, so that kind of sucks, but um, it's not too terrible. If you sacrifice a basic land, search up three more basic lands. Um, could be pretty decent. Next up, we have Ents Fury. Oh, I didn't even notice the tree guy behind the eyes, the smoky eyes in the back. Oh, they're like right there next to me. Look at those eyes. Look at them eyes. Um, Ents Fury is one in a green for a sorcery. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. If its power is four or greater, then that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and fights target creature you don't control. So it gets a counter if its power is four or greater. Then, even if it's already gotten a counter, it gets another plus one, plus one until end of turn and fights something you don't control. That's not great, um, but it's not bad. I wish it was a bite spell rather than a fight spell. Um, but hopefully, if you've managed to give it two extra plus one, plus ones, um, it will survive a fight. Uh, next up, we have Fall of Gil Galad. One and a green for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, scry two. Chapter two, put two 1 1 counters on target creature you control. And then chapter three, until end of turn, creatures you control gain. When this creature dies, draw two cards. Then, wait. Until end of turn, target creature you control gains. When this creature dies, draw two cards. Then that creature fights up to one target creature. I mean, that's not great, but it's also only two mana, so you can play it early and get the ball rolling. Um, maybe by the time Chapter 3 comes around, you've got something really potent and palpable um, to give that ability to, or something with low toughness even. Uh, hopefully you can take something out that your opponent controls but also kill your thing so that you get to draw two cards It'd be, it's an interesting balance I think uh, next up we have Fangorn the Tree Shepherd 
Four green, green, green. So seven mana total. For a 410. A 410. Tree folk, legendary creature. All tree folk you control have vigilance. That is amazing. Whenever one or more tree folk you control attack, add twice that much mana. Green mana. And then you don't lose unspent green mana as steps and phases end. That is interesting. So it gives all tree folk vigilance. So you've just got a 410 that can't be tapped. Or never taps, I would say. Sorry. My face is now getting stuffy because I'm talking so much and I don't breathe through my nose enough. Um, so this is crazy. This is great. This is really... And it's got the largest booty, too. So if you've got that card from earlier, I think it was blue. It might have been black. Um, something that allows you to attack with toughness rather than power. Something like Fangorn is going to be really powerful. But at seven mana, that's that's a real steep price to pay. Uh, next up, we have Gladrim Bow. Two and a green for an artifact equipment with flash. When Gladrim Bow enters the battlefield, attach it to one target creature you control. Untap that creature. Ooh. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, plus two, and has reach. And its equip cost is two. So this is kind of like a green reach version of Embercleave. Um, there's not a lot of flash equipments, but this one's really good. It also untaps the creature, so you can attack with something knowing that you have the Gladrum bow in your hand. Cast it in response to your opponent attacking. Um, that's pretty good. Pretty interesting. Next up, we have Gladrum Guide. Three and a green for a 3-4 elf scout creature. He's got blindfolded folks. Um... When Galadrim Guide enters the battlefield, scry two. That's it. That's all. Not bad. Generous Ent is next. This guy's creepy looking. Five and a green for a five seven. Oh, this guy's the four cycling, I bet. Five and a green for a five seven tree folk creature with reach. Whenever Generous Ent enters the battlefield, create a food token. And then, yep, yeah, four cycling for one. Very glad that uh, land cycling is back in this set and very and even more glad that it is cheaper and it's only one mana to cast. I think that's really good. And we've got Gift of Strands, three and a green for an enchantment aura with flash. Another flash. Um, enchant creature, when Gift of Strands enters the battlefield, scry two. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus three. Uh, very powerful. And, not a lot of uh, auras that can be used as combat tricks. This one is very good. Uh, next up, we've got Glorfindel, Dauntless Rescuer. Two and a green for a 3-2 legendary creature, Elf Noble. Whenever you scry, choose one, and Glorfindel, Dauntless Rescuer gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Um, your choices are Glorfindel must be blocked this turn if able. Your other choice is Glorfindel can't be blocked by more than one creature each combat this turn that's not terrible it's interesting I could, I could see a world where in combination with a bunch of other things this is really powerful but it's kind of just mediocre uh, next up we have last march of the Ents. six green green for a mythic sorcery this spell can't be countered. Draw cards equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control, then put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield? What? That is stupid strong. Sure, it's eight mana, but if you're playing green, you could probably have eight mana by like turn four. It can't be countered? If you had, what's his name, with a 10 butt, um, where did he go? This guy's got 10 toughness. If you cast this with him on the battlefield, you get to draw 10 cards and put any number of creatures on your from your hand. 
onto the battlefield? Oh my god, my chest can't even comprehend that kind of card. I mean, green's gonna have to step it up if it wants to beat that. That's definitely the front runner for the best green card. Uh, next up we have Legolas Master Archer. One green green for a 1-4 elf archer legendary creature with reach. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Legolas, uh, put a 1-1 counter on him. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you don't control, Legolas deals damage equal to its power to up to one target creature. That is interesting. Um, so you can use it to ping things, but also give it counters. Very interesting. Uh, next is the long list of the Ents. For one green mana, you get an enchantment saga. And it has, wait, six chapters? What? I don't think I've ever seen a saga that has more than four chapters. This is the longest list I've ever seen. Long list of the Ents. And they're all the same. So all six chapters are the same. They all say... Note a creature type that hasn't been noted for the long list of the Ents. When you cast your next creature spell of that type this turn, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 counter on it. So there's a reason why it only costs 1 mana, is because A, it's difficult to take use of. A lot of the times you are building synergies around specific creature types, so you're not gonna, ha you're gonna have to build around this in order to have it function highly because you're going to need multiple creature types. You look at your cards in your hand, note the cards you've listed for long list of the Ents already and go, okay, I haven't said Dwarf yet, so I'm going to cast this Dwarf next. But then ultimately it just comes into the battlefield with one 1-1 one, one counter on it. So it's not even like crazy good. It's just interesting. I think that's kind of where I'm coming to terms with the Lord of the Rings set so far is that the cards are either useless really really strong or really cool um, really strong they're above par for power or they're just interesting and interesting cards don't always get played but interesting cards always get remembered um, and I think that that's something important especially if you're like on the design team at WotC interesting cards are never forgotten even if they don't see a lot of play people love them people make them their pet cards they build around them um, I don't think long list of the ends has like a lot of build around potential obviously if you're playing like um, a Volo guide to monsters kind of deck where you've got all of your creature types are different creature types um, this is just kind of a shoe in because you get an, a free 1-1 one, one counter on everything you play. Um, but it's really not that powerful. I feel like it would be really cool if this was multiple 1-1 one, one counters or 1-1 one, one counter and something else, maybe reach or something. Um, it's interesting. And I think that that means that the long list of the ants is going to be remembered Next up, we have Lothlorien Lookout. I think I nailed that. One in a green for a 1-3 elf scout creature. Whenever Lothlorien Lookout enter attacks, sorry, scry one. So on attack, scry one. There's lots of scrying synergies with green, which is, which is cool. I like that. Next up, we have Many Partings. One green for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle, create a food token. That's a great sorcery, actually. Especially for all these cards that care about food tokens. That is fantastic. Grab a basic land, create a food token, no downside. Next up, we have Mariah Doc Brandy Buck. Mar Maria Doc Brandy Buck. One in a green for a 2 2 halfling citizen legendary creature. Whenever one or more halflings you control attack a player, create a food token. So again, lots of food token synergies with the um, hobbits. Um, very flavorful. Yeah, even that was a pun. Next up, we have a Mirkwood Spider. One green for a 1-1 one, one spider with death touch. Whenever Mirkwood Spider attacks, 
Target legendary creature you control gains death touch until end of turn. Ooh. That's pretty good. Uh, next up, we have Mirror Mare Guardian. Two in a green for a 4-2 dwarf soldier creature. When Mirror Mare Guardian dies, the ring tempts you. Interesting. I like the mention of Durin in the flavor text there. Pretty good. Next up, oh, we got doggos. Doggo alert. Mushroom watchdogs. One and a green for a 2-2 dog creature. Sacrifice a food, put a 1-1 counter on mushroom watchdogs. It gains vigilance until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Not bad. Watch dogs that get bigger. Peregrine Took. Pretty good. Um, pretty good character. The Tooks are interesting people. Two and a green for a 2-3 halfling citizen legendary creature. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead. So basically, you just get extra food for everything. Put this in your token deck, you make uh, food tokens. If you put this in your Ginny Fey deck, you can turn that food token into a dog or a cat. You're making a bunch, you just get one extra token. I love it. And then it has a secondary ability with sacrifice three food tokens, draw a card. That is pretty steep, actually. Um, sure, you're not paying anything, but a normal food token gives you three life. And to sacrifice three foods to draw a card, I wouldn't give up nine life to draw a card. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, next up is Pippin's Bravery. One green for an instant. You may sacrifice a food. If you do, target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Otherwise, that creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So this is pretty cool. You can either eat and prepare yourself better and get a four, four, or you don't eat and you just get two, two until end of turn. Um, not bad. I think there's better combat tricks for sure. Doesn't give you reach or trample or anything. So it's a little soft. Uh, next up is Quick Beam, Upstart, and four green, green for a five, six tree folk legendary creature. Whenever Quick Beam or another tree folk enters the battlefield under your control, up to two target creatures each get plus two, plus two, and gain trample until end of turn. Whoa. What a mouthful. Um, that is a big sentence to put on a card. That's okay. It's not, that's not great. Um, it's just 2-2 two, two and trample until end of turn. I guess you play this pre-combat. Hopefully you can swing out and do some massive damage. Uh, Radagast the Brown. Radagast, that's his name. Rewind all the way back to we, us reviewing the blue cards. There was a card with Radagast's image on it, and I could not remember his name to save my life. Uh, Radagast the Brown is a 2 green green 2 5 avatar wizard legendary creature. Whenever Radagast the Brown or another non token creature enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top X cards of your library where X is that creature's man of value. You may reveal a creature card that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control from among those cards and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I think that's really fun because there's a lot of creature types. Even if this is your commander and you're just sticking with one color, there's a lot of creature types in green. And you can easily put together a 30 squad of creature cards that don't share creature types. Um, and I think this is a really fun way to like... It's almost like Cascade, Creature Cascade, 
uh, attached to, um, obviously, a druid wizard guy. Radagast is one of the best characters in the whole lore. The whole of Tolkien lore, Radagast is dope. And he's got like a squirrel friend. There's a badger back there. This wolf, a bunny, and a big moose. Um, I think this is really cool. It's like Creature Cascade is fun. And I think that, you know, I want to build this deck for commander as well next up is revive the shire one in a green for a sorcery return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand create a food token that's not bad for two mana sorcery speed so you can't do it on nine steps um so that's a bit of a downside but in general two mana to return something from your graveyard uh, to your hand is really good then you get the added benefit of adding a food token to the mix uh, which you're going to want anyway. So it's just upside, upside, two mana. Very good. I like it. The ring goes south. Three and a green for a sorcery. The ring tempts you. Then reveal cards from the top of your library until you real, reveal X land cards, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Put those land cards onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. So that make, I think that makes sense. So if you have four legendary creatures, then you reveal cards until you find four lands and put those lands directly onto the battlefield. Tapped, which is okay, because then it's just for the next turn, but that's a pretty big ramp spell. It could be, could be a very big ramp spell. Uh, next up is Shortcut to Mushrooms. One in a green for an enchantment. When Shortcut to Mushrooms enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Well, that's not bad. So every single time uh, you sacrifice a food token, um, you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on the beginning of your end step if a permanent you control put a one one when you sacrifice one food token at the end of your turn you can put a one one counter on a creature you control that is good for two mana not too bad uh, you get the free uh, ring tempt at the beginning there so that's that's pretty good uh, next up is shower of arrows two and a green for an instant destroy target artifact enchantment or creature with flying and scry one this is Deadly Canopy or um, Shoot Down. I can't remember it now. Um, three mana, kill something with flying or an enchantment or an artifact. This is that card plus Scry One. So they just keep adding power um, to this card. And Shower of Arrows is the latest iteration of it. And it's okay. I like that it has artifact and enchantment. You might need that. Uh, stew the conies. Turn two colorless and a green for an instant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Create a food token. I mean, that's pretty good. That's a bite spell right there. Um, and you get the added benefit of making a food token. I think that's pretty decent. It's expensive for a bite spell, but you're, you pay the one extra mana and you get a food token. I, I'd take that deal. Next up is Woe's Pathfinder. One in a green for a 1-1 one, one human shaman creature. Tap to add one mana of any color. You can pay six in a green tap. Another target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. That is way too expensive for that ability. Um... This is just like the other card we were talking about. That first ability is fine. Play this on turn two. You've got three mana. It's great. It's the classic ramp spell, uh, ramp creature for green. That second ability, practically useless. I, I hope you never activate that ability. It's bad. Uh, next up, we have Gladriel Gift Giver. Look at that art. That's beautiful. It's a little blurry for some reason. They don't have the high res version of it on Scryfall yet. 
Um, but that's stunning. I love it. Very powerful. Uh, Galadriel is three green green for a four four elf noble legendary creature. Whenever Gla Galadriel gift giver enters the battlefield or attacks, choose one. Put a one one counter on another target creature, or create a food token, or create a treasure token. Whenever it ETBs or attacks, that's not too bad. It's kind of like um, generous visitor, but a little bit extra. It has to attack. It's beefier. It's a beefier generous giver visitor. And that's what it is. Brandywine Farmer is next. Two and a green. This looks so serene. I feel like when I was younger, I probably would have picked Strider if I were to imagine myself as any of the Lord of the Rings characters. Um, and now I feel like Brandywine Farmer would be just lovely. Absolutely lovely. So Brandywine Farmer says, uh, whenever it enters or leaves the battlefield, create a food token. Obviously, they're farmers. They make food. I like that it's when it enters and leaves, so you could maybe bounce it. If you flashed this, or sorry, not flashed it, flickered it, you would get leaves and enters. You make two food tokens just by blinking it. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, next up is Chance Met Elves. Two and a green for a 3-2 elf warrior creature. Whenever you scry, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Chance Met Elves. This ability triggers only once per turn. What? I don't get the flavor reason why elves like scrying so much. Because they want to see the future? Or they see things that other people don't? They have keen senses? I guess I don't get where that flavor is coming from. Why, why do elves care about scrying so much? And then we've only got one card in green left, and it's Elven Farsight. Uh, one green for a sorcery, scry three, then you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, draw a card. So you get to draw that creature if you put... If you scry three and put a creature on top, you get to draw that creature. Which isn't bad for one mana. I'd pay one mana scry three any day of the week. That's really good. Uh, the fact that it's on a green card uh, ticks me off a little bit, but, uh, you know, not too bad. And, yeah, few can foresee whither their road will lead them till they come to its end, Legolas. Um, that's it for green. I Honestly, I think that it it all comes down to that last march of the ends i think this card is so powerful that you know there aren't many sorceries that it's like this ends games and if if last march of the ends doesn't end your game after you cast it you are going to end the game in the next turn or two like this this is so overpowered and crazy. And that's not even counting the fact that you might hit creatures that change the face of the game on their own. Like, even if you just hit normal creatures, putting any number of creatures from your hand onto the battlefield after you've drawn that many cards... Uh, is going to be game shifting, game ending. Um, if you happen to have extremely powerful creatures in your hand, say stuff that's like nine or 10 mana that you can't efficiently cast very easily, you get to play them for free. You get to put them onto the battlefield so they get ETB triggers. Like this is extreme, this is super powerful. There's there's more fun green cards, um, but this is my vote for the most powerful um, and my favorite green card. This this is cool. This is one of those cards that as soon as you draw it, you're thinking, oh, I just need to play this card. If I can just cast this card, I'm going to win. It's I'm going to get to do something potentially really exciting. 
in front of the table. It's those moments that are just like those moments are what makes Commander for me. I'm not a huge Commander fan, but it's those huge moments that that really make it exciting and fun. Uh, we're gonna take another quick little break. Uh, go to the washroom, refill our water because my throat is dying and I'm chugging water like crazy. Um, and then we're going to jump into gold cards. And then after that, we'll do colorless and land cards. But I think being that legendary cards matter a lot, I think there's going to be a lot of gold cards. We're only at 172-ish. Or actually... Wait, why are why are these in such weird orders? We're only at like 190-ish. <laughs> I have no clue what number we're on. 190-ish. We still have like a hundred more cards to go and only two more segments left. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of gold cards, I think. Anyways, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much. I would love it if you could comment below with your most exciting green card um like the video if you liked it thumbs down if you didn't like it um yeah subscribe to the channel if you could it would really help us out thank you for watching this and sticking it out till the end uh we're gonna keep going so definitely if you're interested in seeing all of the lord of the rings cards uh watch the videos prior to this one and watch the ones coming up uh, if you're on Twitch, we're just going to hit the BRB button and we'll be right back in just a couple 